You didn't think I was gonna leave, did ya? You didn't think I was gonna forget about the shape of water, did ya? No. I was never gonna forget about the shape of water. I just got back from the theater. Let me tell you what I think about it. There were a few scenes that could have been deleted, but enough about that. This is what I like about the shape of water. The fact that Sally Hawkins plays someone who is mute. The thing about special needs people, we all need our film that depicts us accurately. And my friend, this is actually a little story, my friend, my longtime friend, suggests, actually she didn't suggest she wanted to see this. And she told us a little story about how she understands American Sign Language and how her family actually, how that helped her family. And she saw it and I asked her what you think. She goes, it's good, it's different. But different, different how? Well, it is a romantic film in some ways. No, not in some ways, in a lot of ways. This, one thing I would like to praise for this film all the acting was amazing. You got Octavia Spencer, Richard Jenkins, Michael Shannon, and Sally Hawkins. And, and the actor who played the creature, well, I would like to say that Doug Jones needs to take first credit in the acting list because the way he portrayed this creature was so convincing you'd easily forget that it's actually an actor behind this costume and makeup. The thing about these fantasy films, especially if it's directed by Gilmar del Toro, you're gonna forget that there's people underneath all that makeup or motion capture. I wanna get down to what I think was good, besides the acting, the plot, how she was able to communicate with this sea creature. Somehow, Sally Hawkins is able to connect with this sea creature, mainly because that her character speaks American Sign Language. This aqua creature also understands American Sign Language. Her character also is a bit of a lonely person, but somehow she's able to find help with her next door neighbor, played by Richard Jenkins. Like her, he's also a bit alone and he wants a friend, and he is an awesome neighbor. He's a great supporting character, and I think that we all need people in films like that. Not only in films, I shouldn't say that, but we need people like that in real life. Neighbors that we need to say, Hey guys, how you doing? Oh, I'm good, you, you know? Stuff like that. And Octavia Spencer, she plays the co-worker that I wish I had. Do not get me wrong when I say this, I absolutely loved the movie. It did deserve Best Picture, and I feel that it deserved Best Picture because of how people with special needs such as being mute, that's gonna connect to people. One thing that I will say is that it's, it is rather weird, odd, you might say. There were scenes that I watched and I just thought that wasn't necessary to show us. That, no, that wasn't necessary. I think once was enough or, you know, so, so, stuff like that. There was a scene where they showed like twice and I just thought, no, nah, that, that, that was just, I think once was enough. And then it just kind of got a little weird at, at one scene. And I'm just like, and then when Richard Jenkins came in, he's like, what's going on? And I said, uh-oh, I know what's going to happen. I just remember laughing um, when, uh, let's just say, I just laughed when he opened the door. To me, my personal opinion, this was a modernized adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, something that a lot of us would actually enjoy. I really enjoyed this film because of how, you know, how people can find the beauty within things that people wouldn't find necessarily beautiful. And for that, I will actually recommend it. If you if you like romantic films, for those out there who love romantic flicks, this is your go-to film. And that is everything that I have to say about The Shape of Water. Thank you, and I kept my promise. Mr. Blue's here for you. Be sure to check out my review for Born in the USA. It'll be coming out shortly for my next record review.